What's up, Yoon fam? It is I, Mark Yoon. So what I'm going to talk about today is my thoughts and opinions about this year's E3 being 2021. I wanted to give myself a few days to actually sit down and think about and take in everything I saw. Uh, I don't know if a lot of you saw my rant that I made after the Bandai Namco um, showcase, if you can call it that. But um, I do have some thoughts. Now, a precursor to this, like, I mean, I own an Xbox 360 and I'm planning on getting a Series X, but, like, forever I've pretty much been, like, a PlayStation guy. I mean, I have Nintendos and stuff like that, too, but when it's my primary home uh, console to play on, it's probably PlayStation. So I should just let you know that off the bat, uh, though I do buy all three systems. So with that being said, it's also going to be a little bit more disheartening for me to go into an E3 knowing that Sony is not going to have a presence there and they're going to have their own conference later down the line. So it also it already like jumps off the bat with a little bit of a low expectation on my end. Um, of course, this is part and parcel to my problem because I should be worrying about just the games that are being showcased instead of like expectations. But uh, I do take onus for that. So I did want to take a couple of days and like try and figure out like where I actually stand on all this stuff. So I think this will be a little bit better of a, I guess, an amalgamation of my thoughts um, and a more fair dissertation as opposed to just like the ranting that you saw in my live stream videos where it's pretty much predicated upon emotional responses instead of like actually looking at it from an objective standpoint and using logic to figure out like where things are headed with E3 as a whole and like how the conference actually was. So the first thing that I want to mention is that I think Microsoft actually killed it. Like they did a really good job. Um, as I said, I wasn't. I never bought an Xbox One because of the exclusivity of the PlayStation uh, 4. There was never any reason for me to buy an Xbox One, like outside of like a couple of the Halo games, which I aren't as good as Halo 3 in my opinion, or uh, ODST or Reach. So uh, playing the new Halos, except for with the exception of maybe the Master Chief Collection um, and Gears, which I'm not really a huge fan of, ever, like maybe after two. Um, I've never, I never really needed to get an Xbox One. An Xbox 360, well, on the other hand, was like totally different scenario because there are so many different exclusives for the game that you kind of have to have it. Even games for long-running series that like I was used to already playing, like Dead or Alive. Dead or Alive 4 is exclusive to the Xbox 360. It's the only place that game exists. Uh, same thing goes for the Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball 2, which has always been kind of an Xbox staple, but it stays an Xbox staple there. There's a bunch of anime games that I really like, like Naruto Clash of Ninja, Naruto the Broken Bond. Um, there is, uh, you know, Lost Planet. Like, the list just goes on and on with, like, all of the games that, like, Microsoft had in that generation. So that just gives you a little bit of a background of why I didn't have an Xbox One. There was just no need. Um, now, with the Series X, like, I was also playing it by year, saying that, like, I'll get a Series X. I have a PS5, but I was like, I'll get a Series X if, like, they can showcase enough reason for me to warrant spending, like, you know, the five or six hundred bucks, including Game Pass and stuff like that. Now, Game Pass is a huge draw, and seeing that a lot of these games that are Microsoft owned are going to come to uh, Game Pass and stay on Game Pass, as I understand it, the third parties, they stay for a while, but then they eventually do leave, and you still have to purchase them if you want to play them. Um, which I'm fine with. I mean, it's still a great game model, and probably the most consumer-friendly base model um, kind of marketing tool that they have out there on the market right now. I think it surpasses uh, Sony's PlayStation Now and their PlayStation Plus system, um, and that's even coming from an avid uh, fan standpoint. So showing things like uh, Halo Infinite and the, how the, the multiplayer is going to be free-to-play, obviously there's going to be monetization involved in that, but I'm still like excited about that. But Halo is going to be day and date, like free for... Uh, for Game Pass, and um, there's a, a litany of other games, like the that Star game, whatever, it looked kind of cool. There was just a bunch of different uh, games that I saw on Xbox that really piqued my curiosity and interest in the console as a whole, and it decided me to, this fall, probably picking one up and adding it to my collection. So, um, I am really excited about that. They also do have that, uh, that game, that game, uh, the financing system that Xbox has, where like you pay like 35 bucks a month to get like a Series X with like Xbox Live and Xbox Game Pass, and you pay it off within like two years or something. Uh, so that's probably what I'm going to end up doing. Um, but I mean, like it's an investment, so what else is it? And then I can start covering those games on my channel, which will actually increase like you know productivity on my end. So that's going to be helpful for that. But the games that they showcased there were stuff that I was like really super interested in playing. Um, now, it, Xbox wasn't, and Bethesda wasn't actually, like, the biggest draw for me for E3 this year. That would have been, like, Bandai Namco and uh, Capcom 
And those were two of the ones that I was probably the most disappointed with. Uh, Nintendo always does their Treehouse events and their Nintendo Directs, and they had their Nintendo Direct E3, and I was actually pleasantly surprised with Nintendo's as well. I covered that on a live stream with Kitty Meowser Gaming, and there was a plenty of, uh, of fun to be had there. As a huge Tekken fan, and it's, uh, probably the best fighting game that I'm the most technically best at, even though Soul Calibur is probably my favorite, I'm probably better at Tekken overall. Uh, Kazuya Mishima has been my main since forever, so the fact that he's being introduced in the Smash, I know some people were disappointed, and I can see their disappointment when they wanted people like Doom Slayer and things of that nature, but, uh, I was super happy, especially when they included his devil form and his devil, his full devil form, or devil form 2, which was only included in a Tekken hybrid game, which, sold really poorly because it's just Tekken HD with like a preview for Tekken Tag 2 with those two characters on it. Uh, that being Devil Jin 2 and Devil Kazuya 2, which were never released in the mainline series games after that point. So it's really cool to see something that niche and cool, and maybe it's a precursor to what's to come in the Tekken series. Uh, who knows at this point, but I was still pleasantly surprised by that. I did... Uh, Granted, I wanted to see something with like Pokemon, like Pokemon Arceus or with Diamond and Pearl, which I care less about than Arceus because Arceus is like a new kind of idea. So I was super interested in what they were going to do with that. But um, I, I don't know. Like, I think they do their own things for the Nintendo Directs for the Pokemon group, too. So like, I, I don't know why I was expecting that again. I was just getting hype up for it where it was. Capcom annoyed me a little bit because like they just said that they were working on DLC for Resident Evil Village, which granted, take your time with it. Make the game as best as you can. Uh, I just don't know why you would say that you're working on DLC until, like, you have a solid, like, state for DLC to come out. Like, it's, it's better if they're like, oh, DLC is releasing with this story, by the way, it's coming out in, like, a month. Uh, that's just my opinion personally, though, so I know other people can think differently about that. Let me know in the comment section down below if you like these teases or if you'd rather have it uh, announcement closer to release. Another thing that I wanted to go over was the Bandai Namco. Now, when I look more closely at the schedule, because granted, I just briefly glanced at it when I was going to be doing the live streams, and I was super busy last week, um, which is why the video schedule has been like kind of crazy this week, so thank you for sticking with me if you have. Um, I thought the Bandai Namco was going to show up some Bandai Namco properties. Um, we had pretty much no fighting game presence, and I did, made it like a joke that like uh, because of Tekken's presence at um, in Smash... I don't know why it's so... The studio lights are so hot to make me itch, sorry. Um that like Bandai Namco had more of a presence at Nintendo's Direct than they did in their own thing because they did like their Dark Pictures Anthology interview thing which I didn't really care about. Um, I play the Dark Pictures Anthology games and I do like um, like them and appreciate them for what they are but they're pretty much like a one and done for me even though they do have some replay value with going back and doing like different uh, things to have different outcomes. I usually play it once and, I'm, and the, the magic's kind of lost on me. Um, it's similar to like a Telltale game with me for that. Like you get it, you get the platinum trophy or achievement, and like you kind of just drop it. Um, no matter how fun of an experience you have with those games, at least that's been my experience. I'm, yours may be different, and that's valid as well. But um, I just expected more from Bandai Namco, and we didn't get anything. I know a lot of people. The biggest thing, especially on my channel and my community, was expecting an announcement of some kind of for season three. Um, now, Season 2 was announced at EVO last year, so it's a possibility, or it might be the year before, but so it's a possibility that like we do get an announcement at EVO in August. EVO lasts from August 6th to August 15th. i got to look up and see when Soul Calibur's tournament dates are, because that's probably when there'll be an announcement. But um, the predication is that like we're in limbo, of kind of like whether Soul Calibur is going to continue with content or whether it's going to be finished at this point. So a lot of eyeballs were on that stream. And the fact that we actually watched the stream while not knowing that that was the stream, and in the stream you can go see, we're talking about where the stream is and trying to go to different sources to find it. Meanwhile, we're watching the stream the entire time. And it was over and done with in a hurry, and uh, suf it's sufficient to say, like, we were pissed. Like, I mean, like, we went in, like, we were pretty mad. Um, but now that I take a breath back, like, it actually says that it's covering Dark Pictures Anthology game right there on the E3 schedule, so I don't know why I was expecting that. Um... It had like a pretty short timestamp too. <clears throat> the biggest problems that I had with E3 this year, besides like the lack of Sony presentation, was the the talking head kind of thing. And I went into this briefly in like my rant video. Um, I don't like when studios talk down to you or talk at you. Like we get it, we're cool, we understand what you're saying. You know what I mean? It's kind of like we identify, man. We know, man. And um, I don't really talk about this kind of stuff on my channel because it's it's a little divisive. Uh, so I try not to get into like any kind of political or socio um, kind of things. But when it comes down to it, like um, when you're showing sharing people's experiences and um, it's kind of hard to understand. I relate this kind of to like the Friends reunion. If any of you guys watched that, it was less about Friends and more like kind of 
putting people out there uh, in a tokenistic kind of showcase to be like, look how woke we are by including these kind of people. Um, their story matters more to us or just as important or anything like that, which it totally should. But the fact is, I understand the kind of uh, presence behind like this kind of showcase. And it's like they're showcasing all these people because they want to get people on board with how like uh, progressive they are, which is totally fine. You should have a progressive standpoint on life and everyone should learn and progress forward. That's the whole purpose of it. And I don't really mind that so much, but I think there's a time and a place for everything. And when you give a bunch of like uh, like talking heads that don't really matter, we don't know, we don't care about, or disconnected from us as people, uh, this platform to kind of talk about their experiences, it's not really going to hit home for us. Like, I don't know if they don't understand that, like, um, just because they tout, like, a uh, gay person and give them their experiences with a sp certain specific gay, maybe from, like, their their gay standpoint, which I don't think it makes a difference. I think people are people. Um, they their, their objective is to get all the gay people that are watching on their side and be like, hey, this company cares about us. You know, they're representing me and they're representing my community and my ideals. So I'm going to give them my money because they represent who I am as a person. That's what their goal is. And they think that we're stupid and don't see that. Uh, some people call that virtue signaling or calling it uh, tokenization where you put somebody out there as a token or a showcase of your um, of your your virtue or how virtuous you are, um, which some of them have like good intentions behind them and some of them don't. The problem is that like it's really hard to differentiate between the two. Um, like I think that like uh, everything has its place and I think video games are for everybody and I don't think that there should be any gatekeeping involved whatsoever. And if there is, especially in my community, I call that stuff out like right away. But the fact that we have like all of these people talking about their experiences, even the guy that was saying like he, he got like, the guy's way younger than me. He was like 10 or maybe 11 years younger than me it looked like talking about how he was in high school, he wasn't accepted because of video games. And uh, I thought that was like, just a really rabid punch in the in the gut because like video games have been mainstream and accepted since like the 80s and uh yeah there is still bullying that goes on but nine times out of ten people use that as a sword as opposed to the reason so it's like they're going to pick something about you anyway because they don't like you in the way you carry yourself so they're going to pinpoint something that they think would be easy to market and target and they're going to go after that point uh it's like it's like art of war stuff to a T like you find your enemy's weakness and you exploit it whether or not you actually believe in that or anything whatsoever I've seen this a, a ton of times um, like uh, I have a lot of gay friends and my gay friends when they get mad at each other they call themselves straight or breeders which, which makes me laugh because it's like your negative pejorative for uh, your own people is to call them like heterosexual which is pretty much the same thing that straight people are doing forever by calling things gay and stuff like that even though like I think there's a separation of the actual intent of the word and what the word actually means in reality just like uh, any kind of slang like lit doesn't mean something's actually lit up or illuminated something being fire doesn't mean it's actually fire or literally fire we just have these slang terms that that act as like a uh a representation of the emotion that we're trying to put forth and or convey and uh sometimes those come with negative connotations but i don't think that actually marries the two with the actual term itself and the actual intent behind using the term as a slang verb um that's why it's it's i just like that's my opinion i could be wrong on that uh i know a lot of people are sensitive to that kind of stuff and um if you are you have a right to like feel comfortable in whatever kind of situation or space that you're in but again i feel like that's not the intent of these companies these companies are using this as a marketing demographic so they're seeing an untapped potential of people and they're saying okay let's look at our demographics and let's look at the number of people in this study that we conducted on like on the down low about like um you know, because whenever you do like one of those surveys, you have to answer your like your gender, your orientation, all that stuff, and they they uh, aggregate all these things together, and they say, okay, well, only like maybe you know like 12 percent of the population is gay in like the united states let's say that okay uh there's it's i'm not exactly sure up on the the new uh demographics but i mean like that's i'm just eyeballing it so if i'm wrong about that i'm sorry um so let's market specifically to that group because that's like these this number of millions of people that aren't ba aren't playing our video games uh clearly we can see from the numbers of the surveys that we've taken so let's go after this demographic how do they do that they take somebody from the community that identifies with that group. Uh, they use them for their affiliation with that group. They tout them out as being um, of that group, and that's the only group that they are comfortable with. And then they push their ideals forward about their marketing through that group. And that's what, uh, in essence, I think using people for 
uh, who they are is a lot more egregious than like um, just marketing to a solid demographic. Um, like I would, I don't know how I would feel if like, um, you know, there was like a, a gay company that like made like, let's say shampoo or something and they were marketing it directly towards straight people because straight people affiliated them with gayness and didn't buy their product. So then they hire me as a straight person to talk about my straightness and how much this product uh, influences me as a straight person speaking to other straight people. Um, I think that would be uh, abusive and uh, manipulative and I don't like those kind of tactics and I don't like seeing them anywhere and uh, this is in no way a denouncement of those kind of people and this is tying back to E3 because I don't know if you guys watch the whole streams but um, me as a person is like I'm, I personally represent myself as an egalitarian I care about everyone equally and everyone has ideals equally um, I, I'm not really uh, huge on equity um, I do like equality um, I understand that people aren't playing with a full uh, deck as soon as they start out. Others have a better head start than others. I mean, look at like um, super rich people and stuff like that with like nepotism and oligarchies and things of that nature. But when it comes down to it, to me, people are people. I don't care what kind of race, creed, religion, color, or anything that you are. As long as like you're a cool person, like you're cool with me. And um, I'll treat you like a brother if you treat me like a brother. Or I'll treat you like a friend if you treat me like a friend. That's just how I've always been. Um, I think they're, they're definitely with my own personality. There's room to grow with that. But how to not make me grow is to preach at me and pretty much give me this like totality of like this entire person is wrapped up into this one neat little bow, which is what we're trying to get away from in the first place. So when they say something like as like um, – as a black woman, I think that like black women need more representation in this area because of these underlying factors and things of that nature. You got to understand that that's not that person actually giving their true emotions or feelings. They may be convinced of that argument and present that as such, but they are being used by that company as a marketing t uh, ploy to kind of like siphon their message through like a tunnel that's like going directly towards like a certain goal. Um, and their goal is always to make more money, obviously, which is any the mar money is important for any business or company. Uh, I just, like I said, don't like when they use people, and I also don't like being preached to. Uh, people have a tendency to um, think that like belief is a choice. I'm not among those people. I think you're either convinced of an argument or you're not convinced of an argument, and the way to convince somebody is not from talking down to them or yelling at them. Uh, it's just not how it works. Like I mean, like humans learn through experience. We grow through having experience with other people like that. Um, I've learned far more about like the uh, LGBTQ plus IA community like with within my own friend group than I have like with anything that any commercial or you know company has tried to push down my throat with their own narrative uh, interlaced within that. So um, my my process is not with like against these movements. It's against like E3 taking their little bit of time they have to do what they're supposed to do, which is market their games and using people as a totem to try and sneak in their own marketing campaigns when they're directed at certain demographics that don't usually purchase their product. Um, where I can see from a business standpoint why that would might be effective, I think it's sickening and grotesque that you would use people in that way and it kind of offends me uh, in a way to think that I'm so dumb that you're gonna change my mind by just representing to me directly. Um, People are smart. People can come to their own conclusions. People can do their own research. Uh, they don't need to be talked down to like their children, especially when we're at like a gaming conference that's supposed to be working on like what new games are coming out this year. Um, as I said, I think there's a time and a place for everything, and that was like the biggest thorn in my side for this year's E3 is trudging through all of like the filler arc stuff to actually get to the end fight. Uh, I felt like I was watching like Naruto Shippuden or something like that, where like literally every other thing was like a game showcase and then filler a game showcase and then filler and it was like really irritating to have to sit through that especially as someone who's live streaming and trying to be entertaining and doing these streams for like three plus hours every single day uh sometimes with multiple guests trying to like sift through this stuff and present the uh information in a more palatable way to my audience and to my community as a whole um, I mean, like, overall, if I'm going to give it on a grading score, I'm going to give E3 this year um, a C. Like, I think they did an average job. Nintendo really shined. I think uh, Xbox really blew everything out of the park. Uh, some of the other things just shouldn't have even been there because they had nothing to show and used it all with filler. Like, uh, I understand esports is, is important, especially for marketing purposes for different games. 
But when you're bringing on esports people as if they're celebrities that like the majority of us even know about, uh, I think it's just like a waste of time. And there's other platforms that they can actually do that on, like doing their own tournaments and Evo and things of that nature. I don't think E3 is the place for any of that. Um, uh, so my disappointment aside, uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to be covering next year's E3. I'm going to play it by year. It depends on how they present their information and how they actually want to hold their informational sessions uh beyond that i don't know i'm definitely going to be covering evo because there's probably going to be some good announcements for fighting games towards that which is like my bread and butter um and i don't know like uh i kind of got burnt out this week from doing e3 that's why my video schedule is off so again thank you if you stuck with me this whole time and i'm trying to be as objective with these kind of uh logistical standpoints that i have as possible i'm always open to new ideas i'm always open to new um, ideas from other people and different perspectives and things of that nature so if you disagree with me on certain things let's have a conversation about it in the comment section down below uh you can also join my discord and we have great conversations that go on over there and i a lot of times like we'll um showcase the group subscribe if you go through and like any of my stuff i've been on youtube now for four years so i mean i have over 500 something plus videos of backlog content that you have to enjoy uh or dis not enjoy <laughs> like i don't know how that would go but uh, we're going to bring this video to a close, guys. If you want to support me the most, the best way is, no, I don't have a Patreon, is to join my YouTube channel. You'll see a little join button next to the subscribe button. Uh, and there's different tiers with different bonuses for people who become Yoonfam members. Um, there's a tier as low as 99 cents if you want to support me that way. Um, and also coming to the live streams. And uh, if you ever feel moved to drop a super chat or something like that, it's greatly appreciated. Uh, a lot of my time and effort goes into this, and I love doing what I do. But... Um, it's uh, nice to have encouragement once in a while, I guess, just like anybody else, but uh, it's not necessary and not even remotely uh, needed to be a part of my community. Uh, thank you just for watching the video and sharing and listening and whatever else, liking and all that good stuff that I'm sure everybody knows what to do. Um, I'm going to like drop it off here. I will be doing a live stream on Saturday, which will be my next video, and that's probably going to be about my experiences with playing cyberpunk 2077 as a first time player on the playstation 5 this past week i've been putting a lot of time into it i've noticed a lot of different things and i'm going to be talking about that then so i hope i see you there but like i always say guys uh, thanks for your time i love it thank you and thank you <laughs>